Hello and welcome to Flicks and Joysticks Retro Remix. I'm your host Guy and with all the excitement going on about Insomniac Games' new Spider-Man for the PlayStation 4, I thought I'd talk about my first favorite Spider-Man, as well as my favorite X-Men games from the Sega Genesis. With this Retro Remix, I've gone back and edited the pacing, added some new photos in it, and with any good Marvel feature, you might want to stay till the end credits. In any case, enjoy the video. Today I'm going to talk about two of my favorite video game series from Sega that were on the Genesis, Spider-Man and X-Men. Comics in the 1990s were an interesting time. Publishers were always looking for new ways to push sales and you had new publishers coming out such as Image and Valiant. Some of my most favorite memories were the comic shops that I went to when I was growing up in Texas such as Good Time Charlie's in Ennis and also Lone Star Comics in Mesquite. Changes to popular characters as well as the introduction of new heroes wasn't all that the 1990s was known for. It was a time of really interesting covers. It was everything from chromium, die cut, scratch and sniff, holographic, glow in the dark. You think I'm kidding, but I'm not. There were a lot of interesting comics that came out during this time, but my two personal favorites were Spider-Man and the X-Men. And I'm not talking about that one game that mixed the two properties together. Seriously, why did they use Cyclops X-Factor costume in that? Anyway, Spider-Man and X-Men were two insanely popular comics in the early 90s. X-Men was heralded by Jim Lee, and the art for Spider-Man was done by Todd McFarlane, both who later on moved to Image Comics. But their initial run on those two standalone, no-adjective series was exciting to me. There were other great stories as well, especially from Uncanny X-Men and The Amazing Spider-Man, but I really had a special affinity for the straight-to-the-point stories of Spider-Man and X-Men. Both Spider-Man and X-Men were introduced in the era of Genesis Does What Nintendo Don't. Spider-Man was released in 1991 for the Sega Genesis and was developed by a company called Technopop. This was incredibly comics accurate for the time because earlier entries such as Atari 2600 Spider-Man just didn't really capture the feeling of what it was like to be swinging on webs, climbing walls, avoiding danger, everything else that made Spider-Man so cool. In this Genesis game, Spider-Man was framed by the Kingpin who accused him of placing a nuclear bomb within New York City. It was up to Spider-Man to find a way to detonate the bomb within 24 hours. And if that wasn't bad enough, Spider-Man's wife, Mary Jane Watson, had also been kidnapped by Venom. This placed Spider-Man in one of his greatest battles yet, and the game made sure that you faced the greatest hits of all of Spider-Man's villains. Dr. Octopus, Sandman, the Lizard, Hobgoblin, Electro, and of course Venom. The Sega CD version took everything that was great about the cartridge version and added all new features to it, including all new levels where Spider-Man would face off against Vulture and Mysterio, a theme song titled Swing Time from Spencer Nielsen and the Mr. Big Rock Band, and also allowed Spider-Man to collect comic book covers from famous issues of the past. In addition, before you got to Kingpin, Bullseye and Typhoid Mary, who were primarily more known for Daredevil, were included as sub-bosses before you finally got to Kingpin. Spider-Man was also interesting for having two endings. You could defuse the bomb and save Mary Jane, or you could fail to save Mary Jane even though you, the city was saved. Another ending was where Spider-Man lost and the Kingpin wiped out both Spidey and Mary Jane. Among one of the other notable features for the Sega CD version was the inclusion of animated cutscenes that included full voice acting. Back in the 90s, full motion video was a bit of a wild west. Not a lot of professional voice actors like you have today, and the unique animation that they used was uh, quite an interesting creative choice. To be honest, it looked more like the CDI Zelda. Yeesh. I loved Spider-Man for the Sega Genesis. For the first time ever, players could finally feel like they were actually controlling Spider-Man. There was always something wrong with those earlier games. Either he could only stick to certain type of walls, he could only swing certain angles. They just never did a good job of capturing Spider-Man. For the first time ever, Sega Genesis really brought the Spider-Man feeling home, and I never got another experience like that again until the Sony PlayStation brought out their game years later. Now let's talk about that other great Sega series, X-Men, and there were two games for that. X-Men came out in 1993 and was developed by Western Technologies Incorporated. It was another great game that really brought home this X-Men feel, especially Especially Jim Lee's X-Men. In this game, the X-Men found themselves trapped inside a danger room simulation and had to fight their way out. Two of my favorite things about this game were the inclusion of my favorite X-Men, Cyclops, Wolverine, Gambit, and they added Nightcrawler, which is a great choice, but is an unusual one considering he was on the Excalibur team at the time. 
However, his teleporting ability is super cool, allowing you and the other player to teleport through walls. Did I also mention that X-Men was two player? The X-Men team would go through various levels, fighting some of their best bosses ever, Juggernaut, Sabretooth, Mojo, and up to and including Magneto in that final climatic battle. Other X-Men, such as Storm, Jean Grey, Archangel, and Rogue would be able to assist the players as players would be able to summon these characters to help during their battle. While I do like the X-Men game, we have to discuss that special feature that was included after defeating Mojo. While it was really innovative for the time, I'm gonna go ahead and call it crap. In order to reset the Danger Room simulation, Professor X asked you to reset the system. As a gamer without the aid of the internet and trying to play it through, I had no idea what that meant. And the solution was insane. The game asked you to physically reset your Genesis console. And why would you do that? This wasn't a game that had a save feature or a password or anything else. If you reset the game in any other standard game, that just starts you over from scratch, and there was no way I was going to go through another five levels all over again. So time and time and time again I died, until finally one day I figured it out. Thank you, introduction of the internet. The X-Men game did so well that Sega created a sequel to it in 1995 called X-Men 2 Clone Wars. No, not those Clone Wars. Disney hadn't bought up everything at that point yet. But X-Men 2 Clone Wars was developed by Head Games, and this time it was a very different experience. There was no set title screen. The game randomly dropped you into action as one of seven X-Men characters, with the inclusion of Beast, Psylocke, and now Magneto was on the side of good, at least for this story's intent. For this story, the X-Men had to go up against and destroy the Falnax virus. The game featured much larger and better animated X-Men, but still retained that two-player action that the first game was known for. While I initially said that Magneto is part of the X-Men team, you do have to encounter and defeat him in level 3 in order for him to be unlocked and join the party. After Magneto is unlocked, his powers include energy blasts and an explosive electromagnetic orb. Like its predecessor before it, X-Men 2 Clone Wars met with success, but we were starting to move into the 32-bit era with PlayStation and Saturn, and eventually Nintendo 64. Interestingly enough, there was a third game planned called X-Women, which would have focused on the female members of the mutant team. Initially scheduled to come out in 1997, the game was shelved, as at that point we had already moved into the PlayStation Nintendo 64 era, and Genesis, while it was still around, was basically a dead system. For me, the Spider-Man and X-Men games really captured that special time when those two properties meant the most to me. They were fun, colorful, looked exactly like their comic book counterparts, and really pushed on that edgy, cool vibe that Sega was so well known for in the 90s. While companies release classic video games from time to time, it's still my hope that either Marvel or Sega will come together to another agreement and allow us to play those great games again. But for me, the only place to ever truly play those games is on a trusty Sega Genesis. still here? It's over. Go home.